Hello, today I am going to discuss about iron metabolism. As and when I am discussing, I will be discussing the MCQs related to that, which is what is going to be important for our exams. Now, the first point to be remembered about iron is that iron deficiency is the most common nutritional deficiency worldwide. Not only in India, it is worldwide iron deficiency is the most common nutritional deficiency. Okay. And before I start with the iron metabolism inside the human body, I would like to start with few basics. The, like for example, now iron is derived primarily from the food. Okay, that's what we know. However, there is a difference in the type of iron according to the sources. Point number one, okay, the iron which is derived from the animal sources, okay, for example, the meat, okay, is called as a heme iron h e m e heme iron okay and the iron which is derived from the vegetable sources okay is called non heme iron it's called non heme iron what is the difference between the two the heme iron has got good absorption okay the heme iron has got a good absorption whereas non heme iron has got a poor absorption that is a primary important difference between the animal iron and the and the iron which is obtained from the vegetarian sources that is why always the animal foods are the preferred foods for iron in the iron in according to the nutritional aspects okay now the point to be remembered point number two to be remembered is the iron absorption occurs in the small intestine and especially in the duodenum in this particular picture i have shown you one intestinal epithelial cell okay and as you all know okay these are the villi okay which i am pointing it with the arrow and this part of the intestinal epithelium is called as apical part it's called as the apical part this faces the lumen of the gastrointestinal tract that is why it is also called as a luminal part okay and in the opposite side is called as the basolateral surface it's called as the basolateral surface now you see the heme ion okay i'm talking here this heme ion now this heme ion suppose this, this is a heme ion it will be directly be it will be directly transported across the heme transporter okay across the heme transporter okay this will be directly transported across the heme transporter into the intestinal epithelium okay like this okay now what is going to happen to the non heme ion okay the non heme ion okay remember it is going to be obtained from the vegetarian sources it is present in the ferric form that is fe3 plus now this cannot be directly absorbed it has to be converted into ferrous form fe2 plus with the help of the enzyme called as a ferric reductase once it is converted this is going to be transported into the intestinal epithelium okay now this transport of ferrous iron across the intestinal epithelium is aided by means of this green colored transporter called as a DMT1 what is DMT1 it's called divalent metal transporter 1 okay the point to be remembered is okay the name suggests it's a divalent metal transporter so the point to be remembered is it is not only specific for the ferrous iron it can transport any iron which has got two valency so it's a non-specific transporter that's the point to be remembered about dmt1 okay now inside the intestinal epithelium you have the ferrous ion that is a fe2 plus now this ferrous ion can have two fates okay one it could be stored inside the intestinal epithelium as the storage form of the ion which is called as ferritin which is a often repeatedly asked mcq the storage form of the iron is called as ferritin okay this can be stored in intestinal 
inside the intestinal epithelium and what is going to be its fate after a few days it is going to be disposed of why it is disposed of every few days okay the intestinal epithelium gets sloughed off okay and it is replaced by new epithelium so this ferritin that is a storage form of iron inside the intestinal epithelium has got nowhere else to go and so it also gets disposed of or what is the second fate of fe2 plus inside the intestinal epithelium it can be transported across the basolateral surface and this is aided by an important and this is aided by an important transporter called as a ferroportin f e r r o ferroportin is the molecule or a transporter which helps to transport f e2 plus across the basolateral surface of the intestinal epithelium okay so the fe2 plus so the fe2 plus comes out now fe2 plus cannot circulate in, in the plasma as such it has to be again be converted it has to be again be converted to the ferric form that is fe3 plus now this is aided by means of an important substance which is shown as the blue color here called as a hephaestin hephaestin now this aids the conversion what does hephaestin do hephaestin aids the conversion of fe2 plus into fe3 plus now this fe3 plus is again okay the transport form of iron okay becomes the transport form of iron now this fe3 plus is going to be delivered to a transport form of iron inside the blood vessel okay now this fe3 plus combines with transferrin transferrin which is the molecule which helps in the transport of fe3 plus inside the blood vessel okay now what is the now what is now what is the fate of fe3 plus now what is the fate of fe3 plus now this fe3 plus is is passing through the blood vessel and it is finally going to be delivered to the bone marrow for the process of hemoglobin generation and a part of this fe3 plus is also going to go to the liver it's also going to go to the liver okay where it is ag again going to be stored as ferritin where it is again going to be stored as the ferritin okay now liver produces an important substance okay liver produces an important substance now and this is the often asked mcq called as a hepcidin very very important please don't down the name please note down the name hepcidin okay h e p c i d i n now what is the role of hepcidin very very important to follow here now this hepcidin actually has got a inhibitory role that's why i'm writing as minus okay inhibitory role how what is the inhibitory role it inhibits the ferroportin or in other words it destroys the ferroportin so it is going to destroy here so what is going to happen once the ferroportin is destroyed the transport of fe2 plus across the basolateral surface is going to be inhibited or in other words effectively the iron absorption across the intestinal epithelium is going to be inhibited so that is why hepcidin is called as hepcidin is called as negative regulator of iron absorption hepcidin is called as negative regulator of iron metabolism okay this is a very very important mcq often asked in the institute exams as well as in the neat exams ferro hepcidin is a negative regulator of iron metabolism now the last part of the discussion i will be enumerating about the conditions associated with changes in the hepcidin level conditions associated with changes in hepcidin level okay i am just writing hepcidin and i will be discussing and i will be telling you the condition associated with the hepcidin okay now first we will see about the conditions which are associated with increased hepcidin level okay increased hepcidin level okay the first condition which is associated with increased hepcidin level would be 
increase in the plasma ion whenever the plasma ion is decrease is increased sorry whenever the plasma ion is increased what is going to happen the body does not require any more of the ion from which is going to be obtained from the food so what happens hepcidin level also increases and this hepcidin will block the absorption of ion across the epithelium thereby further brings down the ion levels okay second the point to be remembered is hep hepcidin is also a acute phase reactant hepcidin is also acute phase reactant so what happens whenever there is a whenever there is a chronic systemic disease whenever there is a chronic systemic disease for example a renal disease or hepatic disease or a cardiac disease okay whenever there is a chronic systemic disease what happens is there is release of some cytokines especially interleukin 6 now this interleukin 6 is an mcq okay so in chronic systemic disease there is release of cytokines especially interleukin 6 and this interleukin 6 will increase the levels of hepcidin hepcidin and what does the hepcidin do it will block the ion absorption thereby contributing to anemia and this increase in hepcidin contributes to what is called as what is called as anemia of chronic disease very important what is the cause of anemia of chronic diseases it is increase in the levels of hepcidin mediated by an important cytokine interleukin 6 hope you are able to get the two conditions associated with increased hepcidin levels now next is about the condition associated with decreased hepcidin level okay yes the first condition would be exactly opposite of the condition which i had discussed for increased hepcidin level means there is a decrease in the plasma ion is associated with decreased hepcidin level or in other words iron deficiency anemia is going to be associated with decreased hepcidin level now if you think logically already there is an iron deficiency suppose if hepcidin level increases what is going to happen it is again going to block the absorption of iron and this is going to worsen the iron deficiency so that is why in iron deficiency always there is a decreased iron deficiency now second is a condition which i am writing as inappropriate please remember the word i am writing as inappropriate means it's an inappropriate decrease okay in appropriate decrease in hepcidin what i am going what i am trying to tell you is about a condition where we actually expect the where we actually expect the hepcidin level to be high however it is inappropriately low the condition is called hemochromatosis what is hemochromatosis as most of you may be knowing hemochromatosis is a condition associated with iron overload so logically thinking so logically thinking hepcidin should be increased whenever there is an iron overload however in this condition it is inappropriately decreased the mechanism i am not going to discuss at this point of time because it is really not very important for your exams so always okay so with this i will conclude the iron metabolism and the important points which are asked in the exams so just as a quick revision okay i will just again tell you the important points only and highlight the same okay point number 1 heme iron which is the heme iron which is the animal source of iron has got a good absorption compared to the non heme iron which is present in the vegetable sources the second point to be remembered is the storage form of the iron is the ferritin so that is why in iron deficiency anemia the storage is decreased so the ferritin level is decreases and serves as a sensitive marker for iron deficiency the third important point to be remembered is ferropotin is a substance which helps to transport the fe2 plus which is present inside the intestinal epithelium across the basolateral surface and helps in its transport in the blood vessel the fourth point to be remembered is transferrin transferrin is going to be the transport form of iron inside the blood vessel inside the blood vessel the point number 5 to be remembered is about the hepcidin never ever forget about hepcidin because 
this is a substance which is produced by the liver and it is going to have a negative effect negative effect on ion absorption how it is going to mediate this negative effect it is by inhibiting the ferropotent always very very important remember that's about the point number five point number six is hepcidin is a acute phase reactant okay so that is why whenever there is a chronic systemic disease or whenever there is a chronic inflammation there is a release of cytokine especially interleukin 6 which will cause the hepcidin levels to increase the point number the last point to be remembered is hepcidin level is inappropriately decreased inappropriately decreased in condition called as hemochromatosis thanks a lot for watching and if you are uh, if you are satisfied you can subscribe for more videos in future thank you